Bruce Lawn. Recently, a clip came out with Sean Mendez talking about having an emotional reaction to a, a Maverick City worship song that really moved him. I wanted to cover this on the channel, really because you guys reached out to me and asked me to cover this on Instagram. So shout out, I think about three or four DMs uh, asking me to cover this clip. I started seeing it float around on Instagram. I thought, why not? We covered Chandler Moore on the channel, who, by the way, we follow each other on Instagram now. Poosh, crazy. So shout out to him. Um, shout out to Maverick City Music, the work they're doing. I talk a lot about this, what I believe is creative a uh, tech revival that's happening in, in culture and in society. So when I see clips like this, it gets me excited. And there's a, a lot of little things he said that I want to unpack. This is from the We Are Man Enough podcast. Now, I watched this whole podcast. And just to be fair, this uh, everything in here is not necessarily congruent or reflective with a Christ-centered worldview. I just want to highlight this video. I want to give you guys a warning for those of you guys that are going to watch it. It's called The Man Enough Podcast with Sean Mendes. We're going to play this clip. And there's a whole lot in here he says with very little words that I wanted to unpack and talk about okay so I mean I jumped right into you know writing songs and then I had a really huge song when I was really young and then somehow wrote another really huge song when I was super young and then another one after that and none of that was coming from a, a knowing place at least I had no idea what was going on it was just like all kind of happening only in the last like two years I've realized like the real uh, power that comes, that music is. And he's talking about the power of music. And he says he's had all these amazing, huge hit records, but it wasn't until recently that he got the epiphany about how powerful music can be. Now listen to what he says next, check this out. And there's something so interesting because I grew up kind of more or less atheist and now becoming much more spiritual, really being sure there's a God or sure there's a higher, thing and there's a the universe or whatever you like to call it music was the thing that did that for me what whoa okay hold on, hold on let's back up he said i grew up atheist and now i'm sure there's a god or this the universe or whatever you want to call it. so he's he's not even sure this is straight out of act 17 to the unknown god this like and he says music is what did it for him watching maverick city choir i think they're called maverick mm. city choir singing about god singing about jesus I'm sitting there watching this YouTube video and they're singing about Jesus and I just start crying, like crying mm. my eyes out. And I'm like, I'm like, you know, when you're crying and it's like, this is like something leaving me. Yeah. Mm. This is like that type of cry. It's like, you know, and I'm like, how is something that my whole life I've grown up to believe is fanatic and, and, and not science and not the truth feel like home mm. because of this song? He, maybe he's agnostic. He says he grew up atheist. We, we don't, I don't exactly know what his worldview is, but he says he grew up viewing Christianity through the lens of it being, quote, fanatic, his words, not mine. Yet he hears a song from Maverick City Music, one of the dopest worship bands out right now. And it does something and, and confirms what he knows to be true deep down inside. Now, Romans 1 says that uh, we have this knowledge of God, that, that we have this thing written on our hearts. There's a book that came out that I wanted to point, point to you guys. It's inspired by a verse from the scriptures, and it's a book called Eternity in Their Hearts. And the entire book is how they have these documented encounters with people from places where the gospel has not went that they've never had the actual gospel or bible or anything like that or a missionary come but they have the same story of the same jesus dying for their for their sins whether it was through oral tradition or whether it was through their dreams right and so it's really interesting how how we as people have eternity written on our hearts that we know right from wrong that we know that there is a higher being that there is something beyond us that we know something had to set the universe in motion that it could not have just been an accident and a lot of times music art a lot of times reimagining how the world can be is what helps people with that initial encounter and he talks about crying and not quite understanding why he was crying and it's something he grew up thinking was fanatical he's becoming more spiritual now like like let's not call this something that it isn't i'm not saying sean mendez is a christian or he's surrendered his life to jesus i don't know where he's at it's a lot of vague language a lot of like i'm spiritual whatever but goodness gracious to me i think this is the beginning of him thinking about 
this Jesus that we talk about as not just something that's fanatical, as not just something that's far away and only for the religious people, but but something that's personal and changes from the inside out and, and help us to spend an eternity in the afterlife, but also help us experience heaven on earth and deal with this consequence of, of, of sin that doesn't take a genius to look around the world and see that there's something wrong. We talk about in this interview, uh, his encounters with pornography. They talk about how he was struggling with alcohol at a very young age. Uh, the host talks about him being addicted to pornography and how it aff affected his marriage. And it, it was a really, really cool, vulnerable conversation. I'm sharing this with you guys because we talk a lot about God using creatives, God using YouTube, God using musicians, God using TikTok to go into the highways and byways of life where people are congregating and they're getting seeds planted. God willing, someone will come alongside and water those and be like, hey, man, that thing that you, you felt, you know, that, that, that was probably the Holy Spirit, you know, pressing himself onto you and someone else can water that. And then hopefully there's a harvest there. And who knows? And Sean Mendes, I mean, he's 22. So this is, this is a all intents and purposes. This is a rather young kid here who's experiencing these things and trying to process these things. And again, the entire podcast is about masculinity and what does it mean to be masculine and vulnerable and all these things, bravery. So it was a very interesting conversation that they had that part is all over social media and again i just wanted to stop and send a, a big shout out to chandler moore maverick city music the work that they're doing the collaborations that they're doing that they're connecting with the justin biebers and the impact that they're having in culture right for so long we've gotten this idea this bizarre idea that being in culture being on platforms being uh, collaborating with people who may not be branded as christian artists is a bad thing Thing. And what we're seeing is when you're connected and in culture, you could help transform culture or rather God can use you or your art or your platform to help transform culture. And I'm just experiencing a, a, a glimpse of that on the, from this channel, but specifically from interviews I've done years ago, uh, like I did an interview with Wendy Day two years ago and something happened in the algorithm and the interview is going viral right now, video two years ago. So I got this new influx of non-Christians because Wendy Day is not a Christian. If you guys are going to watch that whole interview, there's a lot of cussing in it, just, just a heads up. And I have this whole influx of non-Christians that are coming to this channel. Maybe some of you guys watching right now that you saw a Wendy Day interview, saw a Brand Man Sean interview because I've intentionally done strategic collaborations with people who share different worldviews than me and they're hearing the gospel in a way that they wouldn't have heard because maybe they came here for a marketing video or came here for some business advice or came here for an interesting interview and then they end up clicking into another video and they hear about this Jesus that we talk about. So I think this is a very, very amazing time to be a creative, to be on these platforms and to leverage these platforms to contextualize the gospel in a culturally relevant way. And I think once we move away from some of the fundamentalism that has kind of plagued the perception of what it means to be a Christian, right? Meaning that your, your shirt got to be tucked in, you ba you basically got to walk around super stiff and act like Ned Flanders all the time. And, and then that, that's, that's what it means to be a Christian. I think once we move away from some of that and we start seeing Christians in a, in a broader scope that, yeah, we're not going to compromise the orthodoxy and the close-handed essentials of the faith. We're not going to do that. We're, we're going to keep it a buck on Jesus is God. Jesus is the only way to God. The scriptures are the inspired word of God. There is sin. You, should, you, know, you need to repent of your sin. We're not going to compromise on that. But when it comes to how we engage with art, culture, media, I think it's a, it's a huge opportunity for us as believers. Jesus said, hey, man, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. And there's a lot of opportunity right here. There's a lot of opportunity in this time. And I think we need more workers. I think we need more creatives. I think we need more people willing to, to be brave, to step out and to do something that will progress this, this message of this Jesus who lives the life that we couldn't live, that died the death that we should have died, that sent his spirit to live inside of us, to transform us from the inside out. I think it's an incredible time, and I'm happy that God is using guys like Maverick City and is speaking to, you know, folks like Shawn Mendes who did that have no real, you know, spiritual background, and it's incredible. So hopefully this was helpful to you. Let me know what you guys think. Kingstream Entertainment. Bruce Lawn. On the way. All right.
Love you guys. Peace. Hey, thank you so much for making it till the end of this video. If you found it valuable, please consider giving it a like and subscribing. You can check out one of the other videos related to this that'll be over here. Now I got to tell you about a free training I have for anyone that is an entrepreneur, a creative, an artist, but maybe you are unsure on how to find your voice, how to find your niche. I have a free training in the description of this video. Check it out. Once again, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you and I will see you on the next video.